right, it's time for rolling and harrowing the grass. As you can see, I've nicked Peter's tractor. He's not going to be happy, but tough luck. Still got all uh, set up for the drill. And it's even got Keithy's lunchbox on the front. Look at that. Now, Keithy can only just get his lunchbox in there. All them tools there. Just big enough for his lunch. All right, so I've got Charlie with me. She's out in the field on the Harrows. We'll catch up with her a bit later on. Big tyres on, 800s. Keep the weight off the grass as much as we can. Watson rolls, 6.3 metres. You've seen them before. I've, I've, we've been through these before. Charlie's harrowed everything. You can see what she's pulled up. Look, she's pulling up all this rubbish. We don't want that in the hay. So she's, um, we've also had sheep out here. So she's gone across it. Her little harrows mixing in all the poo which is natural fertilizer for the grass the rolls then they're gonna squish the grass basically you got what you're doing is iron in the soil so you can have a nice flat field but you're also bruising the grass over now that makes the plant want to grow some more so it's going to shoot out some more shoots that's the theory behind it and the most important thing is the pretty lines it leaves in the fields charlie's got her gps on if i follow all the um the brighter lines when I turn around, this one will be a brighter line. It's just the way the grass has been pushed over this way. So we'll put the same lines in. We've got the drone, we'll take a picture at the end. It looks pretty smart. This is something we do every spring. You've got to do it before the ground gets too hard. It's lovely and supple at the minute. The guys with the sheep have been here, a few ruts. So we're going to just iron everything flat. The wings come out and then everything folds over together. Quite a nice job. You get to cover the grass. And because me and Charlie are first over the grass, we get to pick up any rubbish that's lying in the in the headlands. We get to scope any trees that are down. We get to we have a good look at all the grass before anybody else. Right. I reckon that's just about another one out. Oh my God! What? Is... I've been sat here nearly an hour now. I finally got them going. I thought there was something wrong with the rolls themselves. I had to ring the farmer. The farmer says to me there's a, one of the pipes will be at pressure in it. You can usually bang the ends, but it was tight, very tight. So to all you ain't got the spanner. Well, I had a 23, made it work. And he was right, it was um, pressuring one of the things. Kept spitting it out, everything I did kept spitting it out. And we're unfolding now, we can do some work. Oh my God. That was a nightmare. We're back at it, it's day two. This is what we're uh, after. Now, the next person to come through is the guy on the mower. He's going to take that mower up. Uh, if you're lucky, no damage. Oh God, it's a little bit damp in this field, but it's rolling all right. But anything like this, we just um, stick it to the side. Because if you don't, it'll end up in a bale and someone will complain about it. You'll always get, around the um, first time round, you'll always get twigs and trees and little bits and pieces. You can't get all everything, but you want to get the main big ones off. You don't want those going through the baler. Uh, they can cause damage to the baler as well. So we try and keep them clear just in between the furrows. A little bit damp, that's all. It won't cause no harm. A lot of, um, you know, it's a lot of this uh, dead whispery stuff this year. And this has had sheep on it. The sheep have done a real nice job because they had a lot to clear up here. It kept them for a hell of a long time. I don't know what's here. We've got literally everything you can see right the way around we'll get a picture at the end uh charlie's been doing the lines she messed it up in this line she's got the lines um the wrong way around just unprofessional she yesterday had a nightmare kept popping the pipes off i was frustrated beyond belief anyway farmer said <laughs> these old boys have done it all a million times says to me on one of the uh, hoses, the nipple, which uh, where the hydraulic thing will be rock hard. And he said, that'll be your issue. And I was like, hmm. Anyway, undid, undid it here, undid one here, both, on both sides. Let the, all the, the pressure off, plugged them in, and away it went. These old boys know what they're on about. Frustrating 
when it's just something that simple. See this huge building? They've got these massive buildings here now. They never used to be there. And I think this big block of land is destined for the same thing, which is such a shame. I, you know, uh, yeah, I don't know. I just want to show you these uh, ditch cleaners and what a marvellous job they've done. I don't know who did it. I can't tell you who did it, but I can see the river, the, um, the water's moving away as it should. And look at it. This is this hasn't even been six months. And look at the. It just looks full of life. And before it would it was just covered in muck. No water was moving. These fields used to just be absolute chaos for uh, wet. Just a tiny bit of dredging. And look what comes back. The banks always come back. It looks a terrible mess once you've done it. But um, give it six months, and the life is thriving. Thriving. Sorry. And this is just this is just a ditch bank. Imagine what would happen if they kept the rivers and all the rest of it cleaned out. I heard about uh, I think it was about a year ago. I have read a story about a farmer who had been paid by Natural England or the Environmental Agency, I can't remember which one, he had been paid by them to help the local village um, shift a load of silt that had um, built up along the banks and uh, was blocking half the bridge. It had three arches and two of the arches were blocked up by silt. And the farmer did the most beautiful job. It was in the Farmer's Weekly, I'm sure you saw it. He did a marvellous job, it looked beautiful and in six months time it would have been thriving, absolutely thriving with life, you know there's no trees blocking everything up and then the same bodies that asked him, that paid him to do it, were then suing him for wrecking habitat. I could not believe what I was reading, I actually, oh it, it caused some upset in the <laughs> You couldn't believe what you were actually looking at. Are we that mad? Are we that stupid? You're gonna pay someone to do a job and then sue the man after? Ah, oh, it got my blood boiling. I cannot tell you. But um, I don't understand what, what quite goes through these people's heads. The amount of insurance claims through flooding every year is ridiculous. Everybody's worried about habitat and stuff. If they maintain these ditches, if they maintain the rivers, the habitat will be 10 times what it is. 10 times. No, there is no habitat for stagnant water. You might get the odd frog that might live in there. I don't know, but I, you look at a river that's flowing with fresh water running through it, that's not blocked up or held up by anything. It is always thriving with birds and habitat and everything like that. I don't understand why we're not cleaning out rivers and letting the water flow to the mouth, to the to the sea. And I know you're gonna, you are in the process. You're gonna hurt a few little things here and there. There's no way of getting over that. But the things you will bring in afterwards outweigh that by ten times. You, I, I, I don't understand who's running these places at the minute. It it just feels so backwards. making a big trailer. I ain't long enough. It's got for uh, you. Uh, is that Charlie's training trailer? Oh, it's you, yeah. It's mine. Yeah. <laughs> I'll still smash it up. Mag flakes. That's what they look like. Mag flakes go in every, every pen.
There's Dave. All of the stabilizers are going to be in this group, even the ones that are still to carve. So Dave's in here. Dave is a new bull for all of these stabilizers. So he can go on all of these stabilizers again. None of them are his daughters. So that just dissolves in there where the calves are draining milk off the mums. Just tops them back up with magnesium. They can get magnesium deficient ever so quick. Lots of new calves in here. These are all the youngest ones. And then it goes to that group over there. Lucas in there, the Cherolet bull. Then the older ones across that way. Dave's in here. Ricky over in that one and Dazzler in that pan over there. They, the groups will stay roughly the same when they go out. These are all cows to carve. We, this is our, one of our brindle trailers. Really good trailers, aren't they, Pete? Well, it was. 40 it, they, they did that. Yeah, but how big are they to start with? Uh, 40 foot. I think it's a little bit short where it is, Pete. You can get five bales on there. <laughs> what was happening then? What's going on? Uh, the the uh, chassis rails all collapsed there, look. And what would happen and if snapped you snapped through there? Oh, and snapped as well? Yeah. Oh, right. Let me get you a shot of that. What would happen if you were to use it like that then, Pete? Would it eventually just you twist? Don't, you'd end up, it just tear it apart on the road and when you've got a full load on, it just fold in the middle. So, uh, you'd what? have two trailers. Yes. So the suspension is mental, isn't it? Yeah, that's got extra helper springs on there. Yeah. I don't know what that old chassis was from, but we just chopped it off. We chopped back, the tapers down, so we, we chopped it off where the taper ends and the rails are square from then on. Yeah. I'm going to put a drawbar under it, it's in the workshop, you can have a look. Yeah. And the rest of the trailer's good, is it? The rest of the trailer's alright, a little bit of work once doing on one of the spring hangers. A yeah. A bit rotten, but we patch that up. So you're going to make a good one out of a bad one? Yeah. Will you weld all the way down there then? No, I just stick weld like that. Why won't you weld the whole way? Well, it's necessary. The meeting. And what was this? Just explain what it was, because it was two halves, wasn't it? That like you welded two of these. And that's plenty strong enough like that, Pete? It's thick. You look how thick gauge it is. Yeah. Really. That's heavy. So we've joined two together. Yeah. Make a drawbar. And then that'll go <clears throat> under to there. We welded onto that there. Right, okay. Now we've got to put another one of those across the front here. Yeah. To support it at the front. Yeah. And then we'll chop the old front off that old trailer we just looked at and then weld it back on there. And then how big will it be at the end then, Pete? It's 29 foot. And then you said there's some work on the hangers you've got to do? It's only this one. Oh man, while well, I've been out rolling, you've been having all the fun. This one here, rotten. Hang on, let me see if we can, yeah, we've got some right there, sweet. So just so we'll, 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 we'll chop that off, same that side, and just make a new one out of half inch plate or something. Yeah. Something a bit stronger. Yeah. And then she'll be good. Yeah. No, it's too good to waste, isn't oh, it? Oh, it's really? a good trailer, yeah. Lovely trailer, lovely and strong. Like everything's mental on them, aren't they? Christ, that is thick, isn't it? I ain't gonna show it very well. You won't pick it up in a hurry. No. You and, and this weld you said, that's plenty strong enough to hold all that weight. That won't crack or nothing. Well, that, that's not actually carrying the weight, that weld. It's just no. holding the two halves together. The, the steel's doing all the work. Oh, right, I see what you mean. That is literally just pinching it. There'll be a little bit of stress on, on the weld when you pull sideways, but all that's basically doing is holding the two bits together. Yeah. All the uh, actual channel itself is carrying the weight. What do they say? An inch of weld will hold... Carry a ton. Carry one ton? Yeah. So let's measure the inches. I think that's about, that's about an inch, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so it's four ton there, if another four there, another four there, it should yeah. be strong enough. Yeah. And uh, you just welded on this little um, hook? Yeah, that's a new ring we've put on. So, uh, yeah, she'll... Uh, will you put a, um, a plate? That plate over there, yeah. Well, I just tidy it up, really. Yeah, but it will that will increase the strength no end, putting a cap Well, on. it's only going to be a thin, just a decoration cap, really. Right. I don't want to save you, don't want to be strangers. Let me feel like you know what to do. Leave your limitations, live and go against them. Just like go and start up something new.
Cause I know, I know, I know that what you planned out Everything that you built up isn't what you want And I know, I know, I know the life you're living isn't that fulfilling Let me help you out Lay your love on me Leave your head and let your mind be free Save yourself and leave the words you spoke in Cause some dreams are meant to be broken Some dreams are meant to be broken 